Embarrassing stories, part one. I said part one, so there must be a part two, right? Yes, give me them views. Come back for more. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that was embarrassing. <laughs> well, hiya, I'm Victor A. He's Victor A. We are Victor A. What is this character wearing? What is that? What is... What? Embarrassing. Anyways, welcome back to Victor A. Talks About Life and Other Shit Using Games to Animate His Thoughts. Because let's face it, it would take me a decade to animate a video of this quality instead of spending a week with games instead. It's still long, but I'll never be as good as them. <laughs> Why am I crying? That's embarrassing. Hey! So today I wanted to share some embarrassing stories. I never want you guys to take me too seriously during these talks because life's too short to take every little thing seriously. And at the same time, I wanted to start sharing some stories for this series because I actually wanted half of this series to be stories. So what better way to have fun making light of things than sharing embarrassing stories? That's a rhetorical question. There is no better way according to this article written from the 1960s saying embarrassing stories are the best way to not take yourself seriously and have fun with your audience. <sighs> oh wait, that's from the 1970s. Well, that's embarrassing. Embarrassing. Yep, yep. First story, crushed. So I hope this one is hashtag relatable to all you awkward millennials out there. Can I get an awkward turtle, please? That is a pretty awkward turtle. All right. Anyways, I want to lead this story up with a mini story. So the story makes sense. So back in eighth grade, I got my first girlfriend. Okay, that sounds weird. It sounds like I acquired her or something. Anyways, I asked out a girl on the interwebs. It was on a site called MySpace. You may have heard of it. Remember the top 8 friends thing? I know it's prehistoric at this point, but one person probably heard of it, right? One of you guys out there, right? Yeah! Me! Woohoo! My space! Yeah! Alright, calm down. No one was ever that excited about MySpace. No one's gonna put you on their top 8. <laughs> you right? So long story short, I asked her out on the interwebs and she said yes. So I do the same thing again with another girl in ninth grade. And lo and behold, she says yes too. Two for two, not counting several rejections that are not part of the story. Don't fucking worry about those, all right? Embarrassing. So let's begin this story. Around 11th grade, I'm once again single and I develop a crush on another girl. Big surprise. Let's call her M. E-M, easy to memorize. And by this point, I've been conditioned to be a chicken. Macaque, macaque, macaque. <laughs> Honestly, for me at the time and probably a lot of people, it was easier to ask a girl out online than in person. So why would I ever do it in person? I mean, if I get rejected online, it's just much less embarrassing, right? <laughs> You'd think so. So one day I muster up the courage to talk to M on an instant messenger called AIM. AOL Instant Messenger. Wait a minute. This sounds a lot like that one game. It's totally not Emily is away, okay? It's a total coincidence. I mean, the girl's not even named M or Emily or Evelyn. Best girl. I just named her M because I actually like to use code names or fake names because, you know, I don't want to be killed randomly at night by these people I talk about. Although I'll probably get killed randomly at night by these people I talk about. So anyways, I strike up a conversation with her on one crazy stormy night. That doesn't really matter to the story, I just remember it was... M, you there? Yeah. What's up? Nothing much. It's crazy stormy today, isn't it? I know, it's... it's kinda scary. Yeah, that last thunder roar made me pee my pants. <laughs> LOL. Huh, <laughs> kinda like that time in 7th grade. Oh, <laughs> what? How did that happen? <sighs> Don't worry about it, it's the next story I'm telling after this one. Huh? So as you guys can tell, I was pretty smooth. But we eventually sort of got into a lull as with most high school conversations with crushes. And I deduce it's the perfect time to ask her out. <sighs> so um, wanna be my girlfriend? Okay. Before we continue, I want you guys to keep this in mind. All my past relationships were sort of sudden. At most, I talked to the girl online for two weeks and then asked her out. But this time, our longest conversation was that one crazy stormy night, which was like 10 minutes. 
And, um, there was just silence for twice as long. Fuck! Uh, I fucked this up. Oh my god, there's no way this can be any more embarrassing. <laughs> right? Right? And then I got a ping. It was another message from a dude. Let's call him... Ugh. Actually, let's not call him anything because I never liked him. This is a little complicated, so stick with me. The dude that messaged me was a guy who was friends with a good friend of mine at the time. He was also good friends with M and someone I never got along with personally. I never saw eye to eye with this dude and we never understood each other. Which is fine in retrospect, everyone is different, yeah. yeah. But at the time, I fucking hated this dude. So you guys will have to hate him with me, please. Thank you. So I get this message from him and he's telling me to leave M alone and to never message her again. And just basically, stop it. Stop. Stop it, you. Stop. Apparently the two of them were hanging out at the time and he rejected me in her place. I was so sad but also mad that it had to be him out of all the people to witness all this stupidity. Pretty embarrassing. Ay embarrassing. Okay, so next story. Oh wait. Well, this is kind of embarrassing. <sighs> I need to make a separate character on a different game on Starbound for this story because Maple Story can't accurately portray it. Just one minute. This is so embarrassing. All right, since we're here, let me tell you guys a small story while I ready the next actual story. Uh, first half story? So one day, I wake up and start writing a script. And then I proceed to embarrass myself by making a video about embarrassing stories. Wait, that shit's too meta. Embarrassing. All right, we are ready. Second story, the great pants peeing adventure. So one day in seventh grade, I was walking home from school and I really needed to pee. <laughs> See, I am notoriously known for having the smallest bladder among my friends and family. Sometimes, even just one glass of water will set me off. Example. <sighs> what? You need to pee again? Yes, of course I do. Aren't you paying attention to the story? What? The problem is so bad, I always avoid drinking a lot of soda at the movies because I don't want to get up in the middle of it. No one normally wants to get up in the middle of a movie, unless you're an asshole, or you have kids, or you have some extraneous situation that makes you get up, other than peeing. <laughs> okay, now that you guys know how badly I usually need to pee, on this particular day, I really, really needed to pee. I'm talking about three bottles of water during the last part of the day, fifth to seventh period, and my teachers wouldn't let me use the restroom because they were busy lecturing us about, I don't fucking know, triangles? Wait, what was middle school about again? Circles? No, squares. <laughs> Anyways, I'm pretty sure what I told you there was a lie, but just know this day was a really bad day for not peeing. See, my house was 10 blocks away from my middle school. Long enough to complain about, but short enough that my parents would make me walk home most of the time. And I was a short kid, around 5 feet tall at the time, and I didn't get much taller than that. So I'm walking home that day, and obviously I didn't walk through these people's houses and apartments, but the game won't let me not walk through them, so yeah, deal with it. So I'm walking home that day, you know, I'm in a rush. I do that running but walking thing. You guys know what I'm talking about. The one where it looks like you're in a hurry, but you're too embarrassed to run. Yeah, that one. So I do that for the first five to six blocks because these five to six blocks are all main streets riddled with cars and other people. I didn't want to look like an idiot running through the streets, so instead, I look like an idiot about to pee his pants. <laughs> I eventually get to my neighborhood, which is the remaining four blocks, and this is where I fucking book it. I take out my set of keys since no one is home, and I have to open the door myself, and I run like the wind all the way to my front doorstep. <laughs> I'm in seventh grade now, I'm not gonna pee my pants, but if I do, it would be an interesting story to tell 10 years from now on YouTube. And as I finish that future seeing meta commentary thought, I made it to the doorstep and I started fidgeting with the keys. See my house back then had four set of locks. One for the screen door in front of the front door, one for the front door, one for the back door, and one for the garage door separate from our house. 
and I had five keys in my key ring. So as a kid who cared mostly about math and music and girls, and not which key is which, because what? why would you care about that? I never took the time to memorize which key was for what. I'd always try every key for the screen door, and once I got that open, I would do it again for the front door. And there was always that extra fifth key. I never figured out where that one went. Fucking fifth key. So I'm there struggling to open the screen door. I start to pee a little, just a little, but I get it open. <sighs> I get to the front door and as I'm figuring out which key it is, jamming it all in, I start peeing. I can feel it start slow and then suddenly it, it's all over. I get the front door open and I just kind of stand there trying to figure out, trying to figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do. Save the jokes in the middle, the meta commentary, it truly did happen and I honestly didn't think I'd ever tell anyone this story at the time. But around the time I started doing animations back in 2015, and I talked about these animations earlier in the series, you can check that out in Honest Change video, I remember this was a great story to tell and I've just been holding on to it. So I know it's stupid, but it's funny. And I don't care if people know I peed my pants in the 7th grade because I had an epic adventure peeing my pants. Well, that's embarrassing. Embarrassing. Anyways, there's no real lesson here, except that life's too short not to be embarrassed. Wait. I've been spelling embarrassing wrong this whole video? Now that's embarrassing. Hey, That's the end. Outro. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe. If you can't wait, watch more. I need you to stop clapping. Stop. Thanks, and well, bye!